Oh. You see this? Something under the windshield wiper here? <laughs> you should never read any paper you find under your windshield wiper. <laughs> see, that was a waste of time. I shouldn't have read that. <laughs> and I shouldn't be expected to have to read things that are under my wiper just because society thinks it's a great place to stick stuff. So look what I've done here. I got a pair of hedge clippers and took them apart. At the bottom of the windshield, I stuck one blade, sharp side up. The other blade, I put right on the wiper itself, sharp side down. Now I'm all set for any kind of advertising flyer or Save the Whales pamphlet or parking infraction that happens to find its way onto my windshield. I don't have to look at it. I don't have to read it. I don't even have to touch it to get rid of it. I just dispose of it by cleaning my windshield the normal way. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, we've had a major wimping out up at the lodge this week. Every year around this time, we challenge the guys at Caribou Lodge to a big tug of war, but they backed out. They say it's too much of a health risk. Because last year's tug of war, it ended up in a draw after five hours of straining on both sides. <laughs> the only real winner was the local hernia clinic. <laughs> so now we missed the thrill of competition and the fun of beating the crap out of another lodge. <laughs> well done, I see you finally got that suit back from the cleaners. I got a great idea how to replace the tug of war with Caribou Lodge. You're gonna perform the nutcracker? <laughs> No, no, Ray. You, you ever heard about those groups that recreate battles? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We don't need recreative. The, the world has enough fresh battles. No, these are historic battles, Ray. They reenact historic battles. Well, sure, but there's been no historic battle around here other than that time Junior Sinkton's wife found out he bought a hovercraft. <laughs> no, see, we're going to make up our own battle. Sure, as long as it's the Caribou Lodge versus us, who cares? We get to wear the neat clothes. We get to shoot the muskets. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do we get to be shot and killed ourselves? Because that would kind of take the fun out of it for me. No, no, no. Here, let, let me show you. Here, hold this. Yeah. Okay, you see, now what we're shooting whoop, <laughs> are these little flags, oh, right? Oh, all right? See, we shoot the red flags, they shoot the green flags. Okay. Put a little piece of duct tape on here so it'll stick to a guy when he, when he gets hit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> duct tape, the musketeer's secret weapon. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, I'll, you, you know what? You kind of won me over with that part, but boy, I really don't want to wear the costume. Maybe I could be an undercover musketeer, eh? No, Rick, you can't! What? No, you gotta wear the costume, it'll wreck it! Oh, all right, I'll wear the costume. Okay, but I'm not wearing the tights. Oh, you gotta wear the tights, it'll wreck it! Man. <laughs> it's time for the Possum Lodge Word Game! Today's prize, well, let me just say, you're gonna need this where you're going. Arizona? Nope. Two free line dancing lessons at the Mercury Creek Dancing Academy. <laughs> now, Mr. Green, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Rothschild to say this word. Quit. <laughs> Quit. All right. And go. All right, Winston, your job doesn't pay enough, so you work hard for a raise. <laughs> so you're, you're way off base on this. You hate this job, okay? Think about it, and when you do think about it, you'd rather be doing anything else, so you... Stop thinking about it so much. Just do it to it, you know? Suck it up. That's what we do in the sewage business, anyway. Well, I I'm saying this job is driving you crazy. Hey, you're getting all depressed, so you... Seek professional help. Get a checkup from the neck up. Oh, man. You wouldn't even need to go see a doctor if you do this. Oh, get Anthony Anthony's new tape. Oh, yeah. It gives you the motivational boost you need to get on with your life if you're feeling down. If your life stinks, don't inhale. You're almost out of time, Mr. Green. And I, I'm listening to this word isn't even in your vocabulary. I give up. What? That's a terrible attitude. You can't just quit now. <laughs> Uncle Red. Yeah, and, and Harold, I'm looking around the place, okay, now don't take this the wrong way, but how can you stand it here? What? I love working here. It's, it's vibrant, it's exciting, it's challenging, it's sexy. <laughs> See what happens when you don't have a girlfriend, Harold? 
Well, matter of fact, see that blonde over there? Where? Over there. Where? Over there. Well, I can't see where you're pointing. What's her name? Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia! <laughs> oh, just hi, that's all. <laughs> She's kind of cute. Have you asked her out yet? You don't mind. <laughs> you want to know what you got to do? Oh. You're gonna give me advice on dating? Oh, come on, Harold. I was quite the ladies' man before I met your Aunt Bernice, you know. And look at us now, huh? We've been together a long, long, long time. Long. <laughs> Uncle Red? Right, okay, that's it. You gotta get a gift for Cynthia, okay? Something special just for her. Um, Maybe electric socks or a personal flotation device. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you gotta ask her out on a date, but keep it subtle, all right? You wanna leave something of yours on her desk. Nothing too obvious, Harold. Maybe a pair of boots or a bucket, hey? That's just an excuse so you can talk to her, see? <laughs> and then, then you just go, just keep it cool. You say, uh, hey, Cynthia, pass me that bucket, will you? And let's go out. Hey? Um, I, I gotta get back to work now. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye, Cynthia. <laughs> Seems no matter how much planning you do or how safety conscious you are, something always goes wrong. I had this fishing boat mounted on top of my car there, and she was solid. I had put a roll and a half of duct tape into the job, so I'm driving along, and up comes the wind, bam, she's out of there. Well, it's not my fault. I didn't actually aim the boat at that hitchhiker. It was an accident. You should have heard the string of obscenities. As far as I'm concerned, a woman that age shouldn't be hitchhiking in the first place. But I'm thinking this whole roof rack concept needs a little bit of re-engineering, eh? Wouldn't it be a lot safer and more aerodynamic if you could put stuff under the car instead of over it. But as the fat guy said to the phone booth, we need a little more clearance. <laughs> All right, the next step's real easy. Uh, what you need is four of these great big tractor tires. Not that hard to come by. There's abandoned tractors all over this country, thanks to the government trade policies, and people prefer to eat food made from vinyl. Okay, Lee, uh, I got a bit of a challenge here. The tractor wheel not actually made to mount right onto the car hub. I got the rim off, took a tire off that, and the rim fits on there fine, but I don't want the rim on there. I want, I want the tractor wheel on there. So what I need to do is to mount the tractor wheel onto the rim with some kind of an adapter. Now, if you call up your local auto supply and tell them you're looking for an adapter to put tractor wheels onto a 1990 Honda, well, there's gonna be some laughter, probably a visit from the cops, maybe a psychiatric nurse. So instead, might I recommend the handyman secret adapter, duct tape. <laughs> Starting to get the idea now, aren't you? Now all I have to do is slide the boat underneath there, and I'll be able to carry it safely and easily to my predetermined destination. It's not a tractor trailer, it's a tractor and a trailer. And it's just that simple. So remember, women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Oh, I almost forgot. There's another bonus to this unit. I've actually added paddles to the drive wheels on her. So it's not just a boat carrier, it's an amphibious car. question that terrifies all men, even more than, can I help you find the lingerie you're looking for, sir? <laughs> you know, if you're a guy who's lived with a woman for any length of time, she's eventually going to ask you that terrible question, do I look old? <laughs> now, I know she's told you she always wants you to be honest with her, but she wasn't being honest with you when she said that. <laughs> okay, so you could pretend you didn't hear her, but she'll ask again, believe me. Or you could just laugh it off, you know. But I say keep that laugh to exactly three seconds. A, a three-second laugh means, no, you don't look old. A 10-second laugh means, can you say Methuselah? <laughs> and a 30-second laugh is technically a suicide attempt on your part. 
Now, the best answer has nothing to do with the question because the question has nothing to do with the question. <laughs> she knows she looks old, and she knows you know she looks old. <laughs> what she's concerned about is that you're going to be unhappy because she looks old. So when she says, do I look old, give her an answer that puts her mind at ease. Say, you look perfect to me, honey, or not through these eyes, <laughs> rather than, don't worry about it, I never look at you. <laughs> Unless you want to be back out there buying lingerie again. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. about this. <laughs> Boy, you look great. I gave you the fanciest uniform. <laughs> I feel like a moron. See? Getting used to it already. <laughs> Doesn't help. Well, what's this thing for? Well, that's your baton, Red. You're the commander. That's how you lead the troops. Yeah, well, some troops. So far, you and I and Mike are the only three guys with costumes. What's that about? Well, there was a bit of resistance to my costume rental fee, uh, but it'll work out. You know, once those guys hear the battle cry, they'll be scrambling for their leotards. <laughs> There's a visual. <laughs> I delivered all the flags to the Caribou Lodge. I'm supposed to give them the green ones and then we shoot off the red ones, right? Yep, yep, that's right. What about the guys at the lodge? Do they have their uniforms on? Yeah, they're a bunch of clowns. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what do their costumes look like? They're a bunch of clowns. <laughs> They didn't like Mr. Humphrey's prices, so they made a deal with the circus that's in town. Wait a sec, doesn't the circus need the clown suits? No, they shut down. Oh. Yeah, the, the elephant had a gastrointestinal problem. They had to hose down the first four rows of seats. <laughs> There's a big stink about that. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's get this over with, eh, guys? Yes! Let's fight those clowns on the beaches! No. Fight them in the marketplace! Uh, we won't don't, rest don't, until don't, we crush don't. them! I'm the commander, not you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. We're gonna fight on the weekend, then. Uh, we're gonna, we'll fight on a civic holiday if we have to. It'll be double time, of course. <laughs> All right, uh, Dalton, no, you go ahead. You do it. Come out of the mood now, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's go kick some caribou butt! Yeah! Talking to animals, local animal control officer Ed Fred has brought us in something special today. <laughs> About a gazillion bees. <laughs> come on up here, Ed. No, no, come on. It's just that I thought I saw one get out, oh. but I, I guess we're going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it a good idea to have an active beehive indoors? I mean, is this safe? Oh, no, no, not really. <laughs> You should have the uh, protective wear on. Right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, my uh, safety suit's getting a little snug, right? Oh, oh. So instead, what I did was I took this insect net and I covered over the entire... Uh, the, uh, hive. 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 Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, well, that, you know, that's too bad because I was hoping you could stick your hand in there and grab a chunk of honeycomb, you know, and then show it to everybody, you know. Yeah, I thought you might want that. You know, they always want to see the honeycomb, yeah. and I guess it's worth it, me getting stung to death. <laughs> I'm kidding you, Red. I'll get you honeycomb. That's why I brought this smoker. Oh. Knocks the bees right out. All right. Gonna need a little more smoke than that, aren't you? Yeah, you want me to make them mad? Is that your helpful suggestion, huh? <laughs> oh, one got out. Watch out. Go. Go. Watch, go. There, there, there. Oh. It's on the table. Oh, here, okay, right okay, here, Red, hold this. Well, I don't smoke, huh? <laughs> this is not a good time for humor, Red. Oh, all right. Okay. Whoa! Whoa! Good God! Whoa! 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 What? What? Okay, uh, I gotta go. Whoa! 
Captain Walter and I were gonna put a new dock in, so we had all this. We are gonna use the oil drums for the flotation under the dock, and we already had built it. We just had to kind of position them in the right distance, just put that under there, Walter, and uh, just position the right distance apart, and then the dock was just heavy. It was a heavy unit, that dock. It was, uh, the water was already, I mean, the wood was already pretty well, you know what I'm saying. So we got that on there, and uh, oh, oh, look out, look out. Oh, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh. You know, I, I don't really remember this part. I'm, I'm sure Walter did everything he could for me. Anyway, we got her up, and the idea was just going to roll her right in. We didn't want to didn't want to get into the lake. We're not too sure about the but the drums kind of bunched up on us a little bit there, and Walter ended up on the. No, don't, no, don't go. Up. Why would you go up there? That's not helping to go up, Walter. Don't. That, that's really of no use. That's of no value to go up the pole. You're not a flag, Walter. We need to get the dock into the water. Get the. Get, he doesn't want to go. It's possum lake. He doesn't want to. Okay, so here you go. I'll get her level. Just jump down. Just jump down. Not too hard. Not too hard. Oh. And then Walter's not really much of a swimmer. I didn't have a life ring or a life jacket. I need to throw him something that would float. Uh... Oh, here we go. Incoming. Oh, and now I, I know. Give him something that he can kind of, you know, steer himself, get himself back to shore. Here you go. Here, paddle. Go out and rescue him like the Coast Guard would. So, actually, this gave me an idea. I got up there on the barrels and I kind of got, I got an idea going through my head. I got to come on in, come on in. Here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. Huh? Here's how. Okay, see that truck? That's our new dock. <laughs> Most people don't remember Roderick Featherstone, and everybody else is working on it. He was this area's gift to the silent screen. But when the bright lights of Hollywood turned their back on him and showed him the door, he returned back to spend out his life here at Possum Lake. Born Webb Switzer, April 1st, 1900. He was a natural theatrical type, so he was forced to leave town at the age of 19. He went to Hollywood, where he got sort of famous as an actor under the name Roderick Featherstone. Nobody ever mentioned Roderick by the time I hit it big in Hollywood. He always played the hero's best friend. He made a whole string of pretty bad films. Violet's Tender Condition, Mustard Keen, Knee Flappers, and Don't Tell Mama. But it wasn't until he did a sound film that people realized he wasn't pretending. He really couldn't act. His last film, Laid a Big Time Egg, came out in 1930. A musical called What Depression? <laughs> After a few years, Roderick was tending chickens back on the family farm near Possum Lake. According to most people, he was having a lot of trouble adjusting back to our lifestyle. Now, I don't recall he came into my store very much. He'd seen how the other half lived, and he still carried himself that way. You know the kind. Guy wanted to buy stuff that worked. <laughs> He ran that amateur theater company, and uh, he was always after me for years to play Willie Lomond in a play called Death of a Salesman. As if anyone was going to come see a play that the title gave away the ending. I remember on his 80th birthday, they, uh, they got together a bunch of his old films, and they had this big to-do for him at their old film house. Now I was working there at the time as a freelance usher. So we helped Mr. Featherstone to his seat, and then they started showing all these jerky old black and white films, right? But uh, the film broke, and, and it took him a long time to fix it. So Mr. Featherstone, he got up, and he made this little speech about what a great life he'd had being a movie star and everything but that Possum Lake was home, and home is the most important thing. And, well, everybody was crying and clapping and everything, and, and I realized that this was my chance to empty the till. And then he was gone. He never married, never even had any kids. But let's not forget that the Possum Lake Little Theater, the government grant players, and the still controversial nude scene in our town courtesy of the efforts of Roderick Webb Switzer Featherstone. We'll never see another one like him. At least that's the hope.
think we may have changed the course of reenacted history. We could have used a little more inspired leadership. Put a sock in it, Dalton. That was all your idea. Oh, good idea. Poorly executed. I'd like to have you poorly executed. <laughs> Bunch of us other. We're the only ones with the costumes on out there. Man, is it ever hard to lead guys when you're wearing tights? Well, the guys at Caribou Lodge didn't have that problem. Well, no, they didn't, did they? Thousands of them dressed as clowns, firing off all those green flags. Yeah, when that little car turned up and then about a hundred reinforcements hopped out. <laughs> Hey, wait a sec. Look at all the hits Mike and I took. What happened to you, Dalton? Well, I just sprained my ankle in a gopher hole. Yeah, while well, you're running away. Oh, turn around. <laughs> oh. Well, so what? You got flags all over your back, too. Yeah, but they're from our side. <laughs> You know, I thought when a commander led the troops, the troops were supposed to follow, not stay behind and fire off rounds from the beer tent. <laughs> well, they were firing off rounds long after they ran out of ammo. <laughs> There's a big stink about that. All right. <laughs> oh, meeting time. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll be down to join the troops later. <laughs> if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and despite how I look, I'm gonna go right to sleep. I'm covered with flags, but they're all at half mast. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Okay, come on, you gotta sit down now. It's time to sit down. Everybody gotta sit down. Okay, guys, sit, uh, sit down, please. Everybody sit down. Sit down, please. Sit down. All right. Oh, <laughs> Wando, 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 Wando,